Well, another attempt to silence conservatives. This time, Columbia University's campus paper, called the Columbia Daily Spectator, is refusing to publish or even consider a Republican student's opinion piece about free speech. Our next guest wrote that op-ed and was even targeted by New York City's Antifa branch. But still, Columbia University and the newspaper re remain silent. Joining me now, campus reform correspondent and president of the Columbia University College Republicans, Aristotle Busalis, thank you for joining us yeah, this morning. Thanks for having so me. you're not just one Republican student at Columbia. You're the president of the Columbia Campus Republicans. Yeah. You have been targeted by Antifa in New York City. They literally put up flyers with your face on it saying what? Yes, yeah, so they said white supremacy lives here. And so you're, you're the face of white supremacy, apparently, yes. on the campus of Columbia. So you've been defamed, including in your own dorm uh, hallway. Yeah. And yet the, the newspaper there won't even give you a little bit of space for 800 words to, to give your perspective. Why not? Yeah, so as uh, campus reform has highlighted, I think they were not willing to hear my opinion just because they don't want me to have it, uh, an ability to speak and to address these students. They've, if you looked at their biased reporting, they've labeled our group as a far-right group to begin with. The Republicans? Yes, the Republicans. And then when we hosted Herman Cain, they said we had 40 students come, we had 80 students. And they've also had uh, unbiased coverage. They've had at least five to ten plus op-eds that were negative about our club and have very few articles that actually promoted free speech in our, our club in general. So I think they're not willing to have this conversation. Any op-eds from the spectator about Antifa, their violent tactics, or the smear tactics against you? Yeah, so this op-ed was actually the first time Columbia Spectator actually would highlight this event. Fox News, as you know, re reported and Campus Reform reported. This was a national story. Mm -hmm. Why hasn't our newspaper reported this issue? <laughs> it's like... When it, you're, this is the dream come true for a campus publication. Having run a campus publication at Princeton, yeah. if you can get a local story that's a national story, your job is to own it uh, and to be the, the, the paper of record for that. Yeah. You're saying instead, because they're not interested in both sides of the story, they've ignored it. Yeah, and also, I also like that. They also put a hit piece on me with one opinion article, which highlighted my name and said I did all this for fame. That's, un, that's very untrue, and I only did these opportunities to go on Fox to really protect conservatives on this campus and give them a voice. All right, part of your voice that's been squelched is this op-ed that you submitted. I'm going to read a portion of yeah. what you had submitted but was rejected. It said this. It says, because Columbia rarely hosts speakers that represent conservative values on campus, it was my club's desire to fill this gap. We have students at Columbia that are not willing to listen and engage, probably for fear of being offended or discovering that their own assumptions could be flawed. College campuses are battlegrounds for these issues, and we are dumbfounded at the slowness of Columbia, Columbia University to see these truths. You write dumbfounded, yeah. but at the same time, you know what you're dealing with here. You're dealing with far left wingers who don't want to hear another side of the perspective. Yeah, and it's really sad because this is college. I don't pay 60 plus thousand dollars in order grand. to hear just one point of view. I yeah. think we have to go to universities to really challenge ourselves and hear a different side. By going to these different talks and hearing from Herman Cain or Dennis Prager, we learn about different ideas. And when people ask questions, I learn about my liberal counterparts. And that's just as productive as hearing someone like Dennis Prager. Well, if you, if, if you ever need a speaker, I'd be happy to come. Well, I'd love to have you any day. <laughs> I, I'm just, I just think it's such an important role to bring those voices. And the fact that universities squelch that and don't cherish it yeah. uh, is, is, uh, is unfortunate. Thanks for having the courage. I mean, literally, there's not a lot of kids that would say, my face was stamped against being a white supremacist that would stand up and keep fighting. It's ridiculous. It's yeah. slander. And uh, without folks like you, uh, we'd be dead in the water on these campuses. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. Aristotle, appreciate your time. Yeah.